In Algebra 1, Section 9.2, we're dealing with solving quadratic equations. Now, the quadratic equations are ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Okay, this is not a quadratic formula, which you will see later on. Um, this is basically anything that uh, has an x squared, an equation that has an x squared in it. Um, and the graph is usually parabola, but we'll go over that in a little bit. So, <clears> the <throat> last section you dealt with square roots. Remember, like, um, 3 times 3 is 9, so the square root of 9 is 3. Uh, in order to solve these quadratic equations, you're going to apply the same concept, okay? For example, the opposite of a square is a square root. So if I want to get x by itself here, I have to get rid of that square. So in order for me to get rid of that square, the opposite would be the square root. This and this would then cancel out, leaving me with just x. But what I do to one side, I have to do the other. So if I square root this side, I have to square root this, giving me square root of 16. Now, in order to finish this, it's the same thing that I was dealing with last section. Okay, I have to find what two numbers, when multiplied together, gives me a perfect um, set of twins inside the square root. So if I have x equals the square root of 8 times 8, so that means because there's two of the same kind in here, it's x equals, sorry, not 8 times 8, 4 times 4, which is just 4. So x equals 4. And how I can check that, I plug it in, 4 squared is 16. Right? So the next thing we're going to do here is very similar. I have an n squared. Okay, so I need to get rid of that square, so I'm going to square root both sides. Unfortunately, this doesn't give me um, a perfect square. These cancel out and end up with n equals the square root of 11. So I'm going to take out my calculator, and I'm going to do 11 square root, which gives me approximately 3.32. So go ahead and write this down, and don't forget your vocabulary, and we have one more set of equations just to make sure that you're understanding um, how to solve this. So, in this case, we're going to do the same concept. I have that square, so I have to um, get rid of the square in order to get x by itself, so I have to square root both sides. And just like we talked in the previous um, video, when I have a negative in my square root, if you try to plug this into a calculator, you'll get the, the word error. You cannot square root a negative number, at least not in, uh, under these conditions. So because of that, I end up with no solution. Okay? Now it's different if the negative is on the inside, I mean the outside, I would still have a solution. But since it's inside the radical, I can't do it, it gives me an error, so I end up with no solution. Alright? Same concept here, negative 4. I'm going to square root both sides. I end up with z, the square root of 100. This cancels out. The square root of 100 is 10. Now, number 5 is just a little bit more tricky in the sense that um, I don't have just this by itself. So first, I need to get it by itself. Um, by getting rid of all his friends, just like um, previously. So for in, in this case, um, I'm going to start with getting rid of 150. Well, it's being subtracted, so the opposite would be addition. So I'm going to add 150 to both sides. Okay, so I would do, I'd be, I'm doing the same steps that I would if I was just trying to solve for an x. Okay, so these cancel out, I end up with 6x squared equals 150. Now, I'm going to divide by 6, okay? x squared equals 150 divided by 6 is 25. Now, this looks exactly like what you see here, right? Um, the steps, uh, this next step, all I need to do is get rid of this square right here, okay? And the opposite of a square is the square root, so 
This cancels out, leaving me with just x, and the square root of 25, uh, 25 is 5. Alright? So, this is my answer. Here's the thing, though. My answer could either be plus or minus 5. That means if I plug in a 5 in this equation, I would get 0. If I plugged in a negative 5 into this equation, I would still get a 0. So there's two answers that I can get. x equals plus or minus 5. Same thing here, z equals plus or minus 10. So don't forget that you have two answers um, because we're dealing with quadratic equation. So go ahead and write this down. Try problems page four. Um, 508 number 9 and 12, 508 numbers 9 and 12, and I'll see you in class.